Welcome to today's class. In today's class, we'll be talking about resultant force with direction. How to calculate for our resultant force when we are giving different forces with different directions. So as we can see here, we have force 20 Newton at horizontal, indicating that there is no angle here. The angle at which the force is acting is zero. The one of 10 Newton acting at 30 degree, the one of 15 Newton acting at 25 degree to the horizontal, the one of 8 Newton acting at 60 degree to the horizontal. At the same time, we have another one here, which is 12 Newton in vertical position, meaning that it has no angle also. Any force that is in horizontal or vertical direction is always having an angle of zero is always having an angle of zero now for us to be able to calculate our resultant here all the slant forces that we have here must be converted into both vertical and horizontal force because as it slant now we can make use of it when these forces can be useful is only we convert them to vertical axis and horizontal axis. Now let's look at our solution here. For all slant forces, we should be able to achieve something like this, meaning we should form a triangle with any force given, any slant force given. We should form a triangle from it. Looking at our slant force here, the one of 8 Newton, the angle is somewhere here, so we can form a triangle in this direction. So we should generate a triangle from every slant force, so that we'll be able to get our horizontal force and vertical force from the slant force. Now, for example here, we have vertical here, we have horizontal here, and this is the force given. We have two angles. These angles is only used to show the trick that we are going to be using, meaning the trigonometry that we are going to be using. For easy understanding, whenever a side is facing an angle, that side should be having a trigonometry of sine, while the other side should be having cos. Now let's look at the one of theta 1 here. We have the vertical facing theta 1. So meaning that our vertical is going to be the F given sine theta 1. Why the H is going to be F cos theta 1. But if we are to use theta 2, it's going to be for theta 2, V equals to F cos 2. And H equals to F sine 2. So meaning that instead of looking for a way to generate this, just know that we are considering an angle we are considering the side that is facing an angle automatically it's just going to be the f sine whatever you're having which is v equals to f sine theta one and if it is this angle that you are going to use definitely it's going to be the h that will be having the word the sine now let's go to our solution but before we go to the solution we have to deal with the conditions first before you can solve any thing relating to resultant force, you must understand that all upward forces are positive depending on the convention you want to use. Some normally use, some will use all upward forces are negative, but in this tutorial class we are going to be using all upward forces are positive and all downward forces are negative. At the same time, all forces going to the right are also positive why all forces going to the left are negative. So also in, together with our condition, we should understand that summation of forces, all forces in the horizontal direction, all forces on the horizontal should be equals to H. We are using H as a symbol for our horizontal. Why sum of all vertical forces should be equals to V, meaning that our V is what is used to indicate our vertical and the resultant is going to be square root of h square plus v square so now to start with the work we have here now looking at the diagram here 
we have to solve them one after the other. For horizontal force here, summation of all forces on the horizontal, which is equals to h, equals to 20 minus 10 sine 30 minus 50 cos 25 plus 8 cos 60. How are we able to arrive at that? Now, for this 20 here on the horizontal, now let's take a look at our diagram here. On the horizontal, this is what we mean by horizontal. All force that is going to be in this on this plane is what we are going to be considering. Now, let's start with the one with zero angle, which is the 20 Newton. It has no angle. That is why it's going to be ordinary 20 here. And as you can see, it's also going to the direction. It's, going to, it's also going to the right direction. So meaning that any force going to the right direction is going to be positive. That is why we're having positive 20 here. Then on the other side, for the 10 sine 30, how do we get that? This is 10 here. If we are to form a triangle from this land force, which is going to look like this. So this is the horizontal part of it that we want to generate. This horizontal part. So for us to get this horizontal part, we will see that the angle 30 here is facing that horizontal part. So automatically, for this horizontal part, is going to be 10 sine 30 degree. That is how we obtain this 10 sine 30 degree. And also, you can see the arrow is coming in here. It's coming, it's facing down here. And whenever you are to generate your vertical and horizontal force, the direction of the two lines, the two lines of the triangle, must be moving opposite to the given force. So as the force is coming here, the arrow here must be coming down, while the one here must be moving to the left. Meaning that our horizontal force here is going to the left, which make it to be negative. We achieve negative 10 sine 30 degree here. Then for the other one, which is one of the 15 Newton. So this is the angle given 25 degree. We can form a triangle from it in this direction. So as you can see, the, the direction of the force is upward, is moving up. Meaning that here, at the horizontal that we are trying to calculate, the, what, the arrow will be moving in what direction? It will also be going like this. Why here? It will also be going upward here. Meaning the two lines must be what? Going against the force given. Definitely for our horizontal here, we are going to be having a negative force on the horizontal here. And it's also not opposite to the angle. Since it's not opposite to the angle, it's going to be cos. So we have 15, we have minus 15 cos 25. So that is how we're able to get minus 15 cos 25 here. And on the other side, which is one of what? The one of the 8 Newton. For the 8 Newton here, this is the angle, which is the 60 degree. You can form a triangle here. If you form a triangle here, you can see the arrow is going in here. Definitely for the horizontal, the arrow will be moving against this arrow. Meaning that the how the arrow here is going to the right. And whenever we have a force going to the right, it must be positive. So this is going to be positive, and it's not also it is not opposite to the angle, meaning that it is going to be cos. So we are going to have plus 8 cos 60 degree. That is how we are able to generate this plus 8 cos 60 degree. So that is for our horizontal. Then for the, for the vertical. We are starting with the one with zero angle, which is the 12 Newton. It has no angle. Since it has no angle, it's going to be, and it's going upward, it's going to be positive, which is ordinary 12, no negative sign. Then for the next one, which is the 8 Newton. So this is another, this is another what, another vertical line that we want to calculate for. We've, do, we've done the one of horizontal, now we want to do the one of vertical. Now to get the one of this vertical, we should know that this side is what is facing the angle. 
So far it is facing the angle is going to be what sine. And the arrow is also what is also going down. It's also going up. Sorry. The arrow is also going up. So since the arrow is going up, it's going to be what? Positive. So it's going to be plus 8 sine 60. So that's how we are able to get plus 8 sine 60 here. Then for the 15 newton here. So this is where the vertical will also be. As you can see, the line, the side is facing an angle. So, so far it is facing an angle, it's going to be sine. It's going to be sine. And the what? The arrow of this side will be what? Will be going against this. Meaning the arrow is going up and it's going to be positive as well. So we are going to have plus 15 sine 25 degree. That is how we are able to get plus 15 sine 25 degree here. Then for the 10. So this is the vertical line that we need here. So we want to make this 10 to be vertical. So how do we do that as we have been doing the rest? So this place you can see is not facing any angle. It's not facing the angle. So it's going to be what? Cos. Since it's not facing the angle, it's going to be cos. And the arrow will be moving down here. Because our arrow must move opposite to the force given. So our arrow is moving down, which makes it to be negative. So it's going to be minus 10, minus 10 cos 30. So that is how we're able to get this minus 10 cos 30. So from what we have obtained here, therefore our h is equals to what? We are dealing with this first. So we have 20 minus 10 sin 30 is going to give us 0 0.5. Minus 15 cos 25 is going to give us 0 0.9063 plus 8. Then cos 60 is going to give us 0 0.5. Then here we are going to have h equals to 20 minus 5 minus 13.5945 plus 4, which is going to give us 5.4055 Newton for our horizontal force. Then our vertical force is going to be all these. When we solve mathematically, we are going to arrive at 16.607 Newton. So after we have obtained our vertical and horizontal value, so we can now form a triangle, a general triangle, that will show us all our horizontal and all our vertical. Why the, what the slant one is the resultant we are asked to generate for the whole forces. So then, seeing this diagram, automatically we should know we are going to be dealing with Pythagoras theorem, which results in what we have here. Our half equals to 5.4055 for the horizontal square plus our vertical square, which is 16.607 square. Then, mathematically, we are going to obtain our half equals to square roots of 305.0118.